It's been dry all year for us. We've not had a wet session or anything. So um, yeah, yesterday afternoon we were finally wet, and then obviously this morning we had a little wobble around, and uh, yeah, then the heavens really have opened. So um, I think the, the organisers have made the right decision. It's a really difficult decision for them to make. Um, some riders will be saying they want to go. Some riders definitely won't want to. But you know, from looking at it, you just need to watch the safety car going around. The, the amount of standing water around, you know, on, on a bike is just not good. You know, you can see the car sliding. That's got four wheels, so we've only got two. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's a bit of a shame. Although it looks like it's easing a little bit, so hopefully, you know, if the, a bit of the standing water can drain away in the next kind of half an hour, an hour, then hopefully we can get racing and give the fans a bit of a show. It's, it's special. Um, Especially the conditions are very strange, very cold and very wet now. So we, now we have to wait, the start is delayed, if we can go out again or when. And yeah, uh, yesterday was not an easy day, first day on, on the bike, complete different um, different bike compared to the, uh, what I've ever ride before. So it was, was not easy, so we still have to, to work and adapt a lot. Welcome back to an increasingly damp Donington Park and the sad sight of the Bennett's British Superbike grid once again being emptied. Uh, and it looks like that may have been our last opportunity to run the first of three races here this weekend. Together then, 27 riders on the grid, from Josh Brooks back to Tom Ward. You can see that some of the guys are on full wet tyres, uh, other, other people uh, perhaps on intermediates. It's going to be a fascinating race when these lights go out. Who's going to get the first drag? And the two vision track to cut his getaway story. But look at Glenn Irwin and Andy Irwin. They get wicked starts on the Honda Fireblades. And Josh Brooks finds his teammate Christian in parked up right inside him. As, is that Joe that's Francis? Joe, that's Joe Francis around in, the outside, yeah. An enormous distance around the outside on bike number 40. My goodness me. Oh, Josh Brooks is tidy as immaculate as ever. Yeah, and that, those into Goddard. And as they come, oh, a big twitch for Josh Brooks. That's cost him. It did cost him the drive up the hill, so Eden has just to be absolutely immaculate through Goddard, but up ahead of him, would you believe it? It looks like Andrew Irwin is going to do what he did at Donington Park at the beginning of August. He takes victory for Honda. Pretty much has been as good as it has for everybody. We, uh, we don't seem to find a good setting um, compared to last year, coming off a strong year. We seem to be struggling more with tyres than anything and so. Yeah, both riders have been working well together. Um, from a, a bike setup point of view, they both ride very similar, um, which helps our, our setup. Um, Alex was doing really good and making good progress until the unfortunate accident at Silverstone. Um, so, yeah, we have Marcus Reiterberger from uh, Germany, who's got a long standing uh, relationship with BMW. He's brought some uh, guys from Alpha with him who have worked with him in the past, their electronics and suspension. And we're kind of using their ideas and mixing them with our ideas. and. He had a big shock because he's used to electronics and more of a, a super stock bike, um, but he's making progress and I think he's doing a good job. Jack Kennedy has that empty track ahead of him. What can Wacko Jacko make of it? The former, the double reigning almost, British super sport champion. He's got to get a good start. So he, he does, Kyle Wright does as well. So too does Taron McKenzie. And Gino, Gino rear sharp off the blocks as well. Brilliant, now I think it's the McCams Yamaha of McKenzie that McKenzie. breaks through. So Mackenzie, who made a brilliant tyre choice and made it pay from 19th on the grid, just loses out going down to Kyle Ryder, I think, is it? Kyle Ryder yeah. on the build by Suzuki. It's, uh, and he still defends uh, from Glen Irwin. As that's Mackenzie wide. And a uh, big mistake by oh. Taz. And who's gone down? That's, that's Ryan Vickers. That's Andy, Andy Irwin and Ryan Vickers. Oh, what a shame. So uh, those two go down. And then well, what's that's happened? Danny, Danny Buchan and, and uh, Peter, Hickman, Peter I think. Hickman. And they, they, well, they, and they, 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 they're saying sorry. I think what's happened there is they've got caught in the aftermath of uh, well, uh, what the Mackenzie Vicar, uh, sorry, the Irwin Vickers incident.
Yeah, it has been very tough so far. Uh, especially the weather was very difficult and very difficult to uh, adapt on the bike, which is completely different. I didn't expect this, but uh, yeah, it's like it is, and I, now is my last chance to to show what I can do. But it needs more time to be able to fight for the post. Everybody, even Stevens initially off the line. Josh Brooks, though, does he nose ahead on the vision track to Cutty? His teammate Inden goes for the inside line. Bridewell's made a brilliant start, swept round the outside. So too has Glenn Irwin on oh, the black one. Big crash, big crash. Oh, that's so lucky. And that's Ryan Vickers, no, I think. Vickers. But, but, but actually, there's a lot of riders out for their own kind of career here. They're out oh. for a job for next year. Yeah. Second for Glenn Irwin, third for Josh Brooks. Fourth, Christian Idnett of Gino Rear. Two brilliant rides for him. Lee Jackson, Andy Irwin, Jason O'Halloran, Luke Mossy, Joe Francis in 10th. 11th for Peter Hickman, the head of Danny Buchan. It was a very difficult weekend for us. Um, a little bit strange as well, because um, we come here, we, I saw the bike in the team, which is on a very high level. And yeah, we, we were able to adjust our bike like um, we know from, from, from my style. So. But this was not really good working, starting with some technical issue in the first uh, practice. We solved this, but then up till today was uh, wet and sure, wet, England cold, uh, no traction at all is something very strange or, or need more time to adapt. But in the end, in the warm-up, I finished five, uh, in the seventh position, which was a small uh, light on the end of the tunnel. So the race was uh, half and a half again, again, new, new, um, experience for me so it was a bad race again second race was dry so really the first dry session where i can start to work with the bike which i finished on 14th position I'm sure the position is not so bad but not not where we want to be and a lot of people crashed so for the second race we, we tried a lot on the electronics even uh, on the rear grip we, we improved my lap times were faster but then uh, still much much far away and it seems that the settings we ride in Europe is not working here very well and I want to say thank you to the team to give me this opportunity but uh, I think for, for such an event we should be much better prepared at least do some testing uh, work with the team with, with they have experience with and, and work from there instead of uh, put the setting in and try to to work which is very strange I, I don't expect this um, but I really have a lot of respect of this paddock and I feel happy to be part of this this weekend and we'll see for the future but uh, next time if we do this we must be much more best prepared.